talks, the next talk is by Dan uh, Meissner. We will talk about the three-dimensional uh, JT washers. Yeah. And uh, gauge growth. Yeah. Well, OK, so uh, um, first I'd like to say a bit about my experience with Andre. So I, uh, I took a, a representation theory course from him as an undergraduate. And I remember there was one proof in which you know, I, I had taken a smooth manifolds class and maybe a complex analysis class at the time, I can't remember. And there was one proof that used, you know, uh, we had a compact group and then we complexified and then we're using some like complex analysis and then uh, the Zariski topology. And I just remember, you know, thinking like, what kind of sorcery is this? This is crazy. And so I knew that I was sort of psychologically not ready to work with Akunkov. So I went to Berkeley. <laughs> and, <laughs> And I, uh, I, you know, I learned a little bit more mathematics, and it was one of the great privileges of my career to come back and work with Andre as a, as a postdoc. And, uh, and I found it every bit as challenging as I did as an undergraduate, but this time I was uh, psychologically ready, and, I, and uh, it was a great joy because no matter how sort of flexible and, and uh, open-minded I thought I was being about how to approach a problem, he would always kind of push me to be you know, even more creative and think of an e even crazier way of uh, of trying to get at it. So I think that's had a big impact on my uh, mathematical development and, and you know, continuing to, to change my taste and so forth. And uh, I think that, you know, I want to say that Andre and I sometimes get into somewhat heated mathematical debates. And, that, and I really, really enjoy these because uh, it's a truism that you learn a lot more from being wrong than you learn from being right. And so whenever I'm in, uh, uh, getting my, finding myself in a debate with Andre Akunkov, I know I'm about to learn a lot. So, so thank you for that. Yeah. But is he sometimes wrong also? Uh, most of the time. Most of the no time. Comment, <laughs> no comment. No comment. No comment. Yeah. Happy birthday. Anyway. Uh, okay. So. Um, okay. So, uh, I apologize to the algebraists that that uh, this talk is going to be a little bit more geometry than algebra. But I'll, I, I guess the motivation and also you know arguably not much quantum structures either. It's really a basic fundamental algebraic geometry problem that I want to talk about. But of course, it's motivated by uh, quantum structures in, uh, in algebra and geometry. So I feel like I have a right to tell you about it. Um, the, the problem is the following. So, so C is a smooth. Projective curve. Um, over a field of characteristic zero. Um, so classically, everybody loves the, the moduli stack of G bundles. So G is a reductive group. And people love the stack of G bundles on the curve. And uh, as, as you know, most people here probably know, that this is a, this is a really uh, lovely moduli problem, but it doesn't have uh, it's not actually representable by a space. There's no moduli space for G bundles on a curve. They're just way too many. Um, and the solution, going back to Harder and Narasimhan and, and Schatz, um, is a really beautiful structure theory for this moduli problem. So basically, you have semi stable, I, I'm, I'm going to focus mostly on the case of GLN today, but uh, so you have mostly semi stable, semi -stable objects. And these have a moduli space, uh, actually, you know, a proper moduli, a compact moduli space. And then the unstable objects have canonical filtrations. So, so if, you, if, you, if you fix G G L N, for example, you fix a C one. Uh, a C one. The, the term class, first term class. N well, no, it's not necessary. I mean, the all yeah, you could do that. Those are connected components of the stack. So yeah. there is a space. There is a compact space for each fixed. Oh yeah, right, right. The connected in general, the connected components will be compact. Yeah. yeah. Um, unstable objects uh, have canonical uh, filtrations, and uh, I will. I'll, I'll I'll remind you towards the end of the talk of what these actual filtrations are because we're going to be generalizing that. But uh, suffice it to say now that basically. It's a canonical filtration, and the associated graded objects are, again, semi-stable. Uh, and, and so in some sense, you can think of this as a complete solution of this classification problem. Every G bundle is either 
semi-stable, in which case it's a point on the space, or uh, there's some sort of canonical structure on it, which allows you to you know, ev specifies a point on the space of semi-stable associated graded bundles for the hardener Simon filtration, and then just some extension data. So this is a, a very nice structure. Do you mean that the, the, the successive quotients are semi-stable rather than the whole associated Yes, uh, yeah. And there's a way to make precise uh, that the associated graded is semi-stable, but in a graded sense. The associated graded is semi-stable, but with a different notion of semi-stability. <laughs> so the question, so I think about, I think about this stack as the map, like this is really just saying maps from the curve to BG, um, the classifying stack for G bundles. And the question today is what about maps from the curve C to the quotient stack X mod G, where X is a projective variety. So if I think of this uh, hardin R simhan theory as a, as a, as a uh, you know, classification theory for these objects, well, what about the, these sorts of objects? So these parameterize, this would be G bundles on a curve along with a section of the associated bundle, the associated fiber bundle associated to the space X. So I should say that this original hardin R simhan theory has had many generalizations. I mean, the, probably the most uh, you know, for objects in abelian categories in many different flavors or, you know, complexes of coherent sheaves, et cetera, et cetera, you know, th this sort of hardin R. Simhan picture has, has, has had vast generalizations since then. So many of you have probably encountered this thing. Um, also, you know, there's another sort of generalization uh, in the work of Barron to the, to the general G when, when G is not GLN. So the notion of canonical parabolic reductions for principal G bundles. Um, but that has, that's very specific to sort of the root. Uh, that's very specific to the root system, and doesn't really. It's not clear that that admits a sort of general, uh, more general sort of interpretation. So I guess what I'm what I've advocated in my previous work is that one should look for this kind of structure in all moduli problems of interest that are that you know don't immediately admit a moduli space. So anytime you see a, a notion, the, every time you see the word semi-stable. Uh, in, a, in a paper, in a math paper, you should ask yourself, what about the unstable objects? And, there's, and, and, and I guess the first part of the first uh, 10 minutes or so, I'm going to try to motivate to you why you should care so much about the unstable objects. Okay, so. Just on the sense of the, so it's not a question, but there was actually no question. Apparently. The question is to look for an analog. Oh, so yeah, the question is what about? <laughs> no, no, I'm saying, so it's a, it's a question to look for an analog of hardware as infiltration. Yeah. Yeah. What can we say about this? What can we say about this stack? Can we find this structure on this stack? I mean, the answer is going to be no. You have to modify it a little bit. But but anyway, so a little bit of meta mathematics. Is this idea of gauged gromov witten theory? So um, and the names. Is, I mean, this goes back in the in the sort of uh, symplectic topology literature to Solomon and Mundet and, the, and their collaborators. Um, and then, you know, in the more algebra geometric context, Telemann and Woodward. And it's a really uh, interesting vision. The idea is allow the, you should, you, you want to allow the curve. So here's just a fixed curve, but you want to allow the curve to vary. Develop nodes, et cetera. And come up with something that's kind of like a uh, gromov witten theory for the quotient stack X mod G. And the ultimate goal of this would be, the, the, the goal of this uh, idea would be to relate uh, the gromov witten theory of, the, of a GIT quotient, let's say, so, you know, some, fix some, you know, polarization, whatever. So, uh, so the idea would be to relate the, the gromov witten theory of a GIT quotient to sort of 2D gauge theory. Which, uh, by this I just mean bun G of C. Um, or sort of, but okay, but now the C should be varying and it's kind of a mystery. I mean, I, I should maybe, in, 
in place of this bungee of C, I should, by 2D gauge theory, I should say whatever you mean by the GW invariance of BG. Okay, now the problem is, uh, the problem with the formulating this theory in an in a algebra geometric context is that this, that this is not really known, uh, you know. So Telemann and Woodward were sort of studying things like this and they kind of went in different directions. Telemann took a very uh, sort of homotopical, went off in a very homotopical direction and said, let's just try to define these things algebraically um, and never mind what actual moduli space these gauge chrome Witten invariants should be. Uh, uh, well, I don't want to speak for him too much, but you know that's that's my sense of what uh, of his uh, his approach. Maybe you should do, you know Hochschild cohomology or the Foucault category or something like that. Um, and uh, Woodward went off in a different direction and tried to actually define these things algebraically, uh, but it's still that that program is still not complete. So my my feeling is that. This should all be easy once we figure out the right way to think about it. And so th as, a, as, a, as, a, as a test case, I'm going to focus on the uh, moduli problem that, that Woodward and Gonzalez and Sol Oh, I should say, yeah. Uh, well, I'll, I'll say that when I get there. So the Woodward and Gonzalez and Solis have been studying, which is a sort of uh, baby version of, the, of what you might look, uh, think of as gauge grown witten invariance. So it's baby because the curve is going to be fixed. So, what? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I have no comment on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are there are various there are various uh, compactifications, but you need a universal G bundle, and you need uh, you want quasi smoothness and stuff like that. So I'm not exactly I'm not exactly sure about those those features. Um, okay, so let me just say what the moduli problem is just to have something concrete here. <clears throat> oh. oh, boy. So we're going we're gonna to study objects of this form. So MCG of x, x is still my projective variety, g is a reductive group, is objects of the form. You have a nodal curve C mapping to a, a, your fixed curve, which is in the notation there, and a map U. Oh, sorry. So So a G bundle E over C plus a, a diagram like this so by this I mean the the fiber bundle associated to the action of G on X given this principal uh, G bundle E and this should be same genus and this should be a degree one map same genus. And this thing, you should be a stable map in the sense of, uh, in the sense of Kinsevich. So it's, 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 it's uh, pictures of this form, diagrams, uh, you know, objects of this form. And the fact that this is degree one means that there's just a component where this is an isomorphism. So over the generic point of C, this map is actually becomes an uh, isomorphism. Um, but you're allowed to sort of develop bubbles in the in the in the sort of in the fiber direction for this principal bundle, okay. But it's it's actually one of the you know. Yeah. So the key feature of this thing. Um, I guess yeah, you can have arbitrary trees. Yeah, well, yes. sorry, can save it stable. Oh yeah, there is a there is a variant with marked points that I'm not really going to talk about. But yeah, you could it, yeah. everything works with marked points. Um, but uh, yeah, the key feature is that you have this map, this forgetful map, uh, this is forget, uh, if I forget you, and this map is actually projective. 
it's, a pro it's, re it's relatively representable at projective Deline Mumford stacks because the fibers of this map are just uh, are faces of Kinsevich stable maps. Is it X, is, X is projective? X is projective, yeah. And in fact, this is probably not the right theory when X is non projective, precisely because the, you know, the G bundle is, lives over C. So the bubbles always have no, the G, bubbles are always untwisted maps. There's no, G, there's no G bundle on there. And so if your target is, let's say, like a vector space is affine, then you get no bubbling. So um, this, is, this is really a suitable thing for projective. Um, then you, then you no, uh, you need smoothness to get a, to get a quasi smooth, for the stack to be quasi smooth, but, uh, but the actual algebraic geometry part you don't really need. E of X is the E of X is so E, e, e is a principal bundle with a with a free uh, right G action and it's it's uh, E times over X modulo G by the diagonal action. E, e, is over C or over e is over the E is a G bundle over the curve. Yeah, so this is a fiber bundle. This is an X fiber bundle over the curve C. Okay, sorry. Um, all right, so uh, so. So this is, you know, there, there's a family of stability conditions here. And G is G alone. Uh, no, G is an arbitrary reductive G, a reductive group. Who I don't know who asked that, but um, yeah, it's arbitrary reductive group. Okay, so there's a family of uh, stability conditions depending on a, a real number, and when 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 uh, delta zero, so really not negative real number, and when delta zero, the stability here just basically corresponds to the underlying G bundle being stable, um, semi-stable. But then the 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 cool thing is that in the, you know as as delta goes to infinity, you recover invariants which are uh, very closely related. You can recover. much of the Gromov witten theory of X semi-stable mod mod G. Yeah, so the stability conditions, well, I'll show you what they are, but they depend on a, they depend on a choice of ample line bundle on X. What? It's something like that, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, and the, the key words here that you can read about is, is the adiabatic limit theorem, and this, there's a moduli space of affine gauge maps, and there's a so-called quantum Kirwan map. And basically, it's not the story I'm going to tell you today, but there's like a sort of well-developed idea. So if you actually think about it for a minute, you know, these things can't actually detect all of the, um, uh, you know, gromov witten invariants of X semi-stable mod G. I mean, even in genus zero, because of the fact that the, the G bundle is trivial here. But there's an auxiliary construction of a master space, et cetera, et cetera, which allows you to relate the two, and that's a, a, a sort of a story for another day. But, I'm, I, but you're, the, suffice it to say that you're interested in integrating over these moduli space of semi-stable objects when delta is very large. And yeah, because the, the, so the curve here is fixed. So in, in, geni in, in positive genus, it tells you something, but it doesn't really tell you the full grown witten theory. In genus zero, you can recover the graph gromov witten potential, which, uh, which tells you stuff. So in genus zero, this is actually pretty close to knowing the gromov witten theory. Um, in higher genus, this is something, but, but not the full story. OK. Are there any questions? So uh, is there an equation like curvature of, of, of connection of plus, plus, uh, plus vortex, back Yes, yeah, yeah, the vortex equation, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is, um, yeah, these are solutions of the, 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 the semi-stable objects are supposed to be homeomorphic. The moduli space that you get algebra geometrically for semi-stable objects is, should be homeomorphic to the moduli space of solutions of the vortex equation. And that is in the work of Mundet and, and Solomon. That's like the original formulation of this. Yeah, that might be right, yeah. Um, okay, so let me just say, uh, Okay, I'll very briefly say a little bit about what the, pro, what the program is for this project. So at this point, I'll say that everything is joint with, um, with uh, Eduardo Gonzalez 
and, uh, and, and Pablo Solis. So the idea here is that I'm going to work in K theory because that's where I'm, I'm more comfortable. Um, and also because there's been lots yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, because I because my, my teacher is I'm going to work in K theory, and, and well, there's been a lot of in, you know interest in in, uh, in these sort of K theoretic Graham Witten invariants because of Andre's work and 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 his students and collaborators, and also Giventhal's written a series of you know a long series of papers recently. So this is I think a, a natural place, but it's also where the theory where this kind of tools uh, that I'm going to tell you about work. So basically, when you're interested in these K theoretic integrals. So I do my delta st semi-stability condition of some tautological class. And by this I mean the k-theoretic in integral, I, may, I mean the sum of uh, minus 1 to the i times the dimension of, a hyper of the hypercohomology. So the usual of this tautological class. And uh, yeah, so the idea is if, you'd like, if you're interested in computing these things would be to do it in two steps. Uh, the first step is the first step is to compute the Euler characteristic on the stack of G bundles. So again, you're going to use the fact, the key feature that you have a proper map for getting the G bundles a projective map. So I can I can just push forward of this tautological class. So that's the first step. And this there's a the the you know. Um, K-theoretic integrals on the moduli of G bundles on a, on a curve are something that where there's, a, there's beautiful explicit formulas due to Telemann and Woodward. You mean if you can come to this push forward? Yes. So that's, yeah, that's something that we actually haven't done yet in the project. But I don't think you can do it for general X, but probably for a projective space. It's like some kind of um, quantum Lorray Hirsch theorem or something like that. Like, I don't know. Well, we'll yeah. Uh, yeah, so for simple, for simple x, there's hope that you can actually compute, compute this push forward. Um, and then step two would be this so-called virtual non-abelian localization. Formula, and uh, I'll just write this down. So the, w the way this looks is that if you have a, a, a stack so if you have a stack like this that has a stratification of the kind that I'm discussing, so a sort of hardener asymhont type stratification, so you have a semi-stable locus, and then you have a union, a bunch of, str of strata like this, uh, and then the, the uh, then you have a formula of the following, and if, if m is quasi-smooth, there's a there's a uh, um, uh, there's a virtual version of this, so you have a formula of the form that says that if I integrate over m some vector bundle e. That's the integral over the semi-stable locus of E, plus some correction terms which have to do with so. So I have some uh, I have unstable strata indexed by some indexing set, and I get an integral formula for the form integral of E uh, is the integral on the semi-stable locus plus a sum of contributions from this unstable strata. So there's a, a formula of this form. So the z alphas, these are the centers of the strata. So in the case of bun g of c, this says that the, your integrals over the over bun g of c of some tautological class is the integral over the moduli of semi-stable objects plus some contributions, and the contributions are are expressed in terms of integrals. And in that case, this the centers of the strata will be these moduli spaces of Associated graded objects of hardener Simhan filtrations. So uh, that's how you should that's how you should think of this formula. You end up and so and this one over the Euler class of the normal bundle I put in quotes because it's actually a quasi coherent sheaf, but nevertheless the integral is well defined. So that's that's a story that I, I don't really want to I wanted to mention it in case you're uh, sort of familiar with these sorts of formulas where where what the motivation is, but I don't really want to get too much into the details of that. Yeah. Uh, we get like a, you know, like a key theoretic uh, field theory or something like that. Uh, 
Well, but the curve is the curve is. I don't know if you're going to feel theory. Like the curve is not varying in this picture. No, but so it's cool, right? I mean, your, in your model, it's cool. Well, old, yeah, but it has to stay smooth uh, because we don't. There's not. It's not the full picture is not known. Basically, this is supposed to be a warm up for like that full problem of how do you actually define a field, like a you know yeah. cohomological field so theory. Yeah. And then you think there's like a Telemann style reconstruction theory for the sort of you know, K theory classes and this bunch of years and this curve model? I have no idea. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Oh, I mean, yeah, I don't know about a reconstruction theorem, but I, I do. The motivation, I mean, I think Telemann has done many of these kind of computations without fully having the thing and, and you know, yeah, it's this, this stuff that's controlled by deformations of the Verlinda formula, and he has this whole story. I, like the, I think it's, it becomes a very com computable thing. Um, but I don't know about a reconstruction of the higher genus. I, I, that I don't know. Okay. But I, yeah. There should be a beautiful quantum algebra story, uh -huh. uh, but that's not what I can talk about at the moment. Although, actually, in a few months, you should ask, ask me again, or better yet, ask Pablo Solis, because he's, he's on the job market. So uh, maybe he'll be able to tell you a little bit more about the actual uh, enumerative invariant story in a couple months. OK, so, so let me talk a little bit about, uh, that's kind of motivation. So, so let me just talk about what is stability. So uh, in order to do that, you have to, take, uh, you have to think about a filtration. So when I said this is a hard or simhan like stratification, what I mean is that the strata should parameterize families of maps from A1, A1 mod GM to the stack M uh, plus an isomorphism to some point P. So this, is, this data here is what you think of as a, this is a sort of a general notion of a filtration in a moduli problem. It's just a, it's just a fam an, an equivariant family of objects over A1. And there's a little exercise. If this is BGLN, then this is literally the same thing as a, as a filtration of the vector space, which is the fiber over 1. So that's where this idea comes from. But the, the example that's relevant to us is that uh, if M is equal to MC uh, GLN of x, then a filtration is a filtration, is a usual filtration, is a z-weighted filtration of the underlying vector bundle. Um, yeah, P is in, so uh, 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 strata primaries families of, 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 this is a filtration of P. Uh, so uh, z-weighted filtration of the underlying vector bundle. So it's a pic it's a diagram like this where I have uh, you know e w inside of e w plus one inside of uh, e w plus two, etc. And, uh, uh, and the the quotients have to be vector bundles as well. So this is a this is a non-trivial fact. It has it again follows from the fact that this is proper over bungee. So it turns out a filtration in this definition of, of a point in this moduli stack is just a filtration of the underlying G bundle. And in the case of GLN, this is what a filtration is. And so the Z weights is important. That's additional data. Um, you can think of this as a finite filtration if you'd like. So this filtration, because it's a filtration that stabilizes to a vector bundle, et cetera, you can think of this as this filtration will be identity. The, the inclusions will be identities for all but finitely many positions W. And you can think of the data of the filtration as just a finite filtration of the vector bundle. Uh, uh, along with the data of where the w or where the jumps occur, um, but yeah, this is a literal translation of this thing. So, <coughs> this uh, so stability comes from a numerical invariant. And this is, well, this wasn't the usual. This wasn't the original way of thinking of stability of vector bundles. Um, but it, it turns out it's, a, it's equivalent. So a numerical invariant
So I guess this is a definition of a numerical invariant. So what should it be? Um, it should be some rule. So it's a map. Uh, it, it, so any sort of non-degenerate graded object. So uh, so I, I, I think of this as a map from, if I take the BGM to the N and mapping to M, it should assign a scale invariant function on r to the n minus 0. And such that, too, that this, this uh, map is compatible with restriction. along maps BGM to the P to BGM to the N and, uh, and constant and locally constant in algebraic families. So what is this data really? In our example, this data is just a graded, this is a Z to the N graded vector bundle. It's a, it's a it's a, or G bundle rather. It's a, I mean, but in the GLN case, it's a Z to the N graded vector bundle. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a point here along with the torus of, of automorphisms at that point. And if you translate what that is, it just means a, 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 a Z to the N graded vector bundle. So to any of these things, you should get a function on R, Rn, and it should be, you know, locally constant in algebraic families and sort of compatible with restriction. So given a, 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 a information of this kind, and I'll, I'll tell you in one second how we get in, in our example. So a point. What's the relation of n with the previous n? The which n? Oh, it's. Oh, sorry. Is I'll leave it. No. No, I don't know where there was a previous. I can't remember where there's a previous. There, oh, that n? No, there's no. Yeah. This should be a sort of any. And for yeah, for, for any, all for all n, yeah. Yeah, so whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, so a point x in the moduli uh, stack is is unstable if there exists a filtration. So a point, let me call this p, just to be, is a, is a filtration of p. Such that this this uh, so when I take the if I have a filtration my, remember my filtration is the map from a one mod gm I can just look at f of zero canonically has a gm of automorphisms and I can evaluate mu of f of zero and if I can find some filtration of my point p such that this numerical variant is positive when I look at the associated graded object then I call it unstable and then semi-stable is just if it's not unstable. And the natural, the, the question here in, in of the general version of Hardin and Simon theory is to ask, let's say you, you have a numerical invariant on a moduli problem, is it true that every unstable point has in some sense a canonical, a maximizing uh, a filtration f, which maximizes this, this function? Of, for any unstable point, is there a maximizer of this function? And that, if it exists and if it's unique, that's called the Hardin and Simon filtration. So, okay. so uh, in our in our yeah for all yeah so for any q so it maps yeah 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 for any yeah for all q uh, a non degenerate by non degenerate I just mean it's the kernel on the automorphism group is finite so it doesn't factor through a smaller uh, torus but so it's sort of non for any non degenerate map like this and for uh, for any size q I get a function on r to the q minus 0, that scale invariant. I'll let me write down what the function is, because then so it'll be. Uh, locally constant from families means, uh, algebraic families. So in other words, it just depends on the weight of the filter. It doesn't, it's saying that it only depends on the weight of the associated graders that you're assigning. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't depend on the actual you know, algebraic structure of those families, of the, of the, of the, of the associated graded objects. Yeah? I'll show you. So in our example, 
uh, on m c g l n of x, uh, we consider the following. Mu equals, so it's 1 over the square root of b times L from bun G plus delta times L from X, where um, so, so if I give you L bun G of a, of a sort of, so remember my filtrations are just correspond to Z-weighted Z filtrations of the underlying bundle. So uh, L of bun G is the following. It's the sum over W. Uh, uh, of W times the degree of GER W of this filtration minus D over R times the rank of GER W. So there's a so this is actually the this is the sort of uh, this corresponds to the weight of the determinant line bundle. So there's a the stack of G bundles over a curve has these sort of uh, you know, positive line bundles. And if you look at the Hilbert Mumford weight, so to speak, of that line bundle, you get exactly this number for a filtration of this kind. But only in a very special way. It's a bubbling of the fixed curve. Yeah. No, no, that's exactly right. That's exactly what. So, uh, just so the G bundle lives on the base curve C, and the bubbling is only in order is only for the for the stable map. Yes, yeah, so the bubbling adds something to a modulus space, right? So no, 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 no. Yeah, but uh, this yeah, but the the line bundle. So you can think of this as pulled actually pulled back from a line bundle under the map. The forget. Uh, I see. Yeah. So when I say it's the it's the weight, yeah. So I take the determinant bundle here, I pull it back, and I look at the sort of Hilbert Mumford weight, and this is what I get. But I'm just saying, so when X is a point, literally your space is not bungee, but something else. I think it's bungee there because it's conservative stable maps. Oh, it's conservative stable. Maps. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, so LX here is um, it's basically the Hilbert Mumford weight on X. So this is where the this is associated to the line that we fix the line bundle. Um, it's the Hilbert Mumford weight on X uh, at the generic point. Of C, so it's basically something coming from the. This is something com so from the GIT problem. But this, these, these are both. If you think about it, let's say I have a a, a, a z to the n graded bundle, and then by every time I choose, if I have a z to the n graded vector bundle, and every, for every co-character in there, I can sort of project that down to a z graded vector bundle, and this function is just a linear form in the weights w. So this this function here, if you interpret it this way, is just a, is a linear form on on R to the Q. This Hilbert Mumford weight is similarly going to be a sort of piecewise linear form on R to the Q. And, uh, and my, the function B of the filtration is going to be a positive definite quadratic form. I mean, scale the weights. Well, uh, yeah, well, let me. Uh, uh, Yeah, so that's why. So I normalize by this. Uh, if I didn't do that, it was sort of the, because this is a linear form. The, the the question of whether or not the question of maximizing the numerical invariant wouldn't be well posed because you could just scale the weights and uh, and uh, and you would uh, get arbitrarily big. So this this keeps that under control. All right, great. So that's the question. So the qu so the question here is. Does there exist a unique, I'll put F star from the sort of optimization literature, does there exist a unique filtration F star uh, such that which maximizes mu of F star is equal to the soup over um, filtrations of my point P uh, of, of mu of of mu of f. And I realize there's a board work issue here. I don't know that everyone can see this. But basically, you know, I, I have this, I, ha I define this stability function 
m mu of a point p. And that is, a, I consider all filtrations of that point, And I, I consider the supremum over all possible values of this numerical invariant. And the question is, if this thing is positive, does there exist a unique maximizer? That's the Hardin-Arsim Hunt -Hard problem. You can slide the board. A little, if I slide it a little. Sorry. Um, OK. So I guess I will say that you know, my interest in this problem, of course, I would love to compute a lot of k-theoretic Roman Witten invariants. But also, uh, I'm, I'm just interested in this kind of question from a purely uh, moduli theoretic point of view. And so I see this problem as a bit of propaganda for a sort of general framework that I've developed over the last couple of years. Uh, it's, a, it's a particularly nice example where everything works very nicely. So, um, so the main actual sort of hammer that, that we use is this, is this theorem that took me sort of six years to kind of formulate and eventually prove. And, 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 uh, and uh, I think I got it down to something that's like very, you know, clean or whatever. But it took me a really long time. And, and so basically the theorem is that uh, given a numerical invariant, on a stack M, and I, you know, there's some technical, yeah, I, I'll just say them, but you want it to be like locally finite type over some Noetherian base, and you want affine stabilizer groups. But uh, so uh, this defines a theta stratification. So. Oh, and I forgot to tell you. OK, well, anyway. Um, if and only if. So by theta stratification, this is the notion, this is the generalized notion of what is the hardin rs simhan stratification. It's a, str it's a stratification by locally closed substacks where the strata parameterize unstable points along with their maximizing uh, filter, the, the, the most, ma most destabilizing filtration. So that, that structure is called the theta stratification. And it happens if and only if there are two conditions. Uh, one is the boundedness. And this says that um, uh, for any bounded subset of points, so for any bounded set of points, So if you'd like any, 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 points, any set of points in the, in the, that can be parameterized by a finite type scheme, uh, there's another bounded subset. S prime, such that, so, for all p in my original set and a filtration of that point p, uh, there exists a, another filtration, f prime, um, of that same point p, such that uh, mu of f prime is greater than or equal to mu of f. And the, the associated gradient of f prime is in s prime. So the way to parse this is that basically, if I fix a if I fix a family of points in my in my moduli problem that can be parameterized by a finite type scheme, then I can find some other bounded set, and it only it can, to find the maximizing filtration, it suffices to only consider filtrations whose associated gradient lies in that in that bounded substack. So it means that you don't have to look too far to find a potential hardin rs simhan filtration. You can, for any, for any particular point, you can restrict your focus to some bounded substack. And and the second condition is a specialization condition.
So a specialization says that uh, you know, any time you have a family over a DVR, so if I have a map from spec of R to M, so I have a family over a DVR, then, uh, then the, the value of the stability function, in other words, the supremum uh, over all, mu of all filtrations of the generic point is less than or equal to the supremum over the special point. So I hope this. So this is uh, my fraction field for the DVR, and this is the this is the residue field. Let's say kappa. And when equality holds. Any maximizing, any HN filtration of the generic point extends over uh, over the entire DVR. So this is basically saying that you know if you have a family, if you have a one-parameter family, then things can only get more unstable as you specialize to a special point. And furthermore. Uh, uh, you know, if, furthermore, if, the, if it's the exact same degree of instability, then you can actually, and if you take a hard and simple filtration of the generic point, that you can extend that as well to filtration over the whole family. Okay, so this is it. This is the, these are the t these are the two conditions. Does this hold for Is it hold for what? Um, I mean, yes, it's an if and only if, yeah. The, yeah, the Higgs bundle, Higgs bundles, yeah. So that's an example of a theta stratification. What about like modular variety, like modular system? Well, I mean, so, um, no, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's, that would be a goal, yeah. In fact, you know, I recently did some work with uh, Alper and Harold Bloom and Chen Yang Shu about like the moduli of KLT Fano varieties in higher dimensions. And that, that would be a, that's a very interesting kind of test case if you consider um, that particular moduli problem. So sort of Fano surfaces with mild, with mild singularities, I, I sort of strongly suspect that you'll be able to find the structure there. But it's at the moment not done. Not, you know, known. Which is the hardest? Ah, so they're both hard in different ways. That's great. So, so this thing is, you have to be clever. So in any given problem, you have to actually do some work to figure out this boundedness. And this thing, you have to set up the problem correctly. And this, so this is actually what I'm going to talk about today. The, basically, there's this perspective, um, an algebra geometric version of infinite dimensional GIT, which allows you to verify this automatically. So that's, I guess that, that's what I'll, given the audience, I think that's what I'll describe. This thing is very, this thing in this problem, oh yeah, so the, so the theorem now, um, this is with, uh, um, I, So the theorem is that uh, that well this, this, this these these uh, these numerical variants that I defined define the theta stratification on the stack MCG of X. So the sort of so. what is the abstraction to define the classification? So somehow you can try to sort of define classification by sort of looking at things that are just maximal value of the Yeah. So what what could go wrong in terms of? Well, I mean, there could be not there could fail to be a unique maximizer. So then you wouldn't have you know. But you can say that super over all of all values of mu. Then I mean. Right, but it could fail to be a, you know you could fail to have a unique maximizer. So there would be more than one. Why is it a problem? Well, then you wouldn't have a, I, I mean, you wouldn't have a stratification if you have sort of two strata that have the same, that meet the same, you know, that hit each other. It should be a, it should be a you know, a disjoint union of locally closed substacks, first of all. Um, but if it just depends, right, just by sort of. Lots of, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah. Other things you can go, so another thing can fail, so this, 
This condition here actually implies that, there's, that there exists a maximizer, and it also implies that the function m mu is constructible. This condition already implies that. But then you also could have this issue that, so you know, uh, in, Harden, in, in the hardener simon filtration, if you, yeah, you, you want the strata to be ordered in such a way that the uh, closure of any stratum lives inside the union of stratum of sort of higher energy. And that's, that's, that's what this thing is sort of guaranteeing you, yeah. So I don't know, there's, yeah, lots could go wrong. Many, many things go wrong. I mean, I, mean, I started with a much longer list of necessary and sufficient conditions. So what I'd say it took a long time, basically is like peeling down, like for instance, this condition S implies the uniqueness, and that's kind of not totally obvious. Um, uh, but you know, I, I basically I started with a long list of conditions, and, and then the proof was very short. And then I slowly started removing conditions, and the proof got longer and longer. And so now it's a 150-page paper, but the, but the, the statement of the theorem is very short. <laughs> so did you learn something during the proof? I learned, yeah, I learned about Tanaka duality. I learned about this, uh, <coughs> this Alper, um, this, uh, the slice theorem of Alper, Reed, and Hall. And in fact, I'm, I have, in order to have the full statement, we're, we're in the process of writing a generalization of that slice theorem. So there's a lot of sort of fundamental stuff that had to be worked out. Capital M, yeah, M U is the soup. M U uh, uh, of a point P is the soup over all uh, filtrations of P. Oh, now I'm writing it again down here, but uh, of mu of F. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I should probably be able to explain you infinite dimensional GIT in seven minutes. Okay. So again, so the boundedness thing, you know, you can ask me later. Uh, but it's a very beautiful kind of argument and actually very elementary, um, in say, ultimately. But the specialization thing, I think, is of interest to this crowd because it involves sort of affine Grassmannians, and everybody loves that. So, uh, so let, me, let me just think about this condition. If you think about what this means, right? So let's just think about when you have equality. So it, it, to specify a, a, uh, uh, a family over a DVR and a filtration of the generic point, if you think about it, that's the same as giving a GM equivariant family. So if I take A1R and I remove, so this is a this is a regular uh, this is a regular two-dimensional scheme here, and it has a unique closed point, which is the point zero in A1 and the and the special point of the DVR. So I'm going to call that point e, uh, zero. And if I I if you sort of think about it, so if I remove the, the entire special fiber, then this is just a copy of A1K, and there's a GM action, and that's just, my, that's just a filtration of the generic point. And if, if I remove the entire zero uh, in A1, then I guess uh, GM acts freely, and it's just a copy of spec of R. So actually, this data here of, is, is the same as giving a GM equivariant map from this thing to your stack M. So let me just do first the case of, of uh, a projective GIT. So here I x mod g, where x is a different x, but it's a projective scheme. And what this is asking is that a filtration of the whole family is if I take a1r mod gm, and what I'd, like, what I'd love to find is something like that. Right? I would like to, this sits inside here as an open substack, and this condition is saying that if the special and generic point have the same uh, degree of instability, then I can find an extension like this. So, that's not always possible, but I, I, I can consider this projection here to, to BG. And BG has a sort of a Hadamard property. There's a unique, this is a surface, this, this is a surface minus a point, and I have a G bundle on it. And there's actually a unique filling, which then must also be equivariant. So because of this sort of Hadamard property that you can extend uniquely over co-dimension, you know, over, over a complement of a point of co-dimension two, uh, uh, you, you have a, there's a unique filling like this. So, I said reductive, did I? It's reductive G. Yeah. Um, you just embed in a G. Yeah, I mean, you can just do it. You can re reduce the case of GLN. Um, OK, so, so you start with this data. And I'm like, I'd like to find this dotted arrow. So, but the first thing I, ha I have some, uh, this. I have my, my, my arrow number two that I get for free. And then now I can imagine, well, what is the data of this lift? Well, that's like a sort of a section of a projective morphism over that's defined generically, and I'd like to extend that over all of A1. You can't always do that, but as we know, you can sort of resolve. So this is like a rational map here, and I can resolve. I can find x mod gm. 
So this is, so I can blow, do some sort of blow up away from, a blow up uh, supported on the origin in A1, in A1 oh, supported at this point zero, and there's always a way to resolve this uh, in such a way that the, the, the key fact is that, so if L is relatively ample, A different x, yeah, but it's pro but it's projective. <laughs> oh, oh, geez, yeah, too many x's. Okay, let me call let me call this thing, you know, a space uh, y. Okay, yeah. So I, I can sort of blow up and I get a surface, and this, the fiber over the origin here will now be a chain of p1s with a with a non-trivial GM action, and so if you have a so I want this relatively ample bundle. Uh, so if that's an important thing in GIT that I'm defining stability with respect to a relatively ample bundle. Um, so this is the third map that I get now. Uh, then the, the point is that if I take L and restrict it to the fiber over the, over the origin A1, this is, now a, this is now a chain of P1s with a non-trivial GM action. Uh, this has a monotone uh, increasing weights. along the fixed points in the fiber. And so this tells you, so basically I have a filtration of the generic point, and then I can do this filling, and I, and I, find, I find this uh, bubbling here, and the sort of Hilbert-Mumford weight, uh, this, if you sort of think carefully about what I mean by this monotonicity, this implies to you that the, that the uh, this implies that the special point is strictly more unstable, that there's a, there's a filtration of the special point which is more unstable, and also it implies that if, uh, because this is strictly monotone increasing, uh, that if they have the same degree of instability, then actually this blow up was a trivial blow up. There was no, there, you couldn't have, you, you, you wouldn't have achieved any blow up or else the, this would exhibit the special point as being more unstable. So this is a purely geometric uh, explanation for this specialization condition. And so what is infinite dimensional GIT? It's this diagram. It's exactly this diagram. So I, I should say, so, so uh, so basically, yeah, so you replace BG with something called BG rat, which is a, a stack, but now it's a sort of infinite dimensional stack. So it's defined by saying that BG rat of T is, a, is a, what's called a very dense open subset. So it's a, or, plus a G bundle on U. So very dense, meaning that it's dense in every fiber over T. So it restricts to a dense uh, open subset in every fiber. And so, of course, there's a, there's a sort of map. So if I have my stack MC. BG Obama G. What? BG Obama G. This is BG rat. Then what is C? What? Then what is C? C is the curve. You can think of this, this is like in gate squares terminology, this is the space, this is the stack of rational maps from the curve to BG. Uh, so, so there's a projection here to bungee of C. And we already said that this is projective. And then there's another projection from bungee of C to this BG rat, which is Q. And this is something that's sort of well studied in geometric representation theory. Like the, this is, this, this, well, this, what is this map? It's just that you take a family of G bundles and just regard that U as, you know, that U is everything, right? So it just is a point here. And the point is that this map Q actually identifies, this is a sort of adelic uniformization of bun G. This is, this is uh, what they might call the rational affine Grossmannian, the, the sort of rational, you know, infinite Grossmannian quotiented by this, this the group of rational maps uh, from, from the curve to G. And the point is that, so this is literally a projective, this is representable by projective Julian Mumford stacks. The fibers of this thing are these, so I'd have to ask some experts what, the, I'll, I'll, this, is, this will be my last remark. So, so I'll have to ask, uh, you know, 
this rational affine, this rational Grassmannian, this rational infinite Grassmannian is not actually an in scheme. I mean, Gates Gorey calls it a pseudo 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 in projective in scheme. It's kind of a, a little bit messier object than the usual affine Grassmannian, but it's close enough to being uh, in proper in scheme that you have exactly this lifting property that I used here. So if I have a map, so this. This still has a weak form of the Hadamard property, this filling in co-dimension uh, two. And then th th this, this, this composition here still has this, this uh, resolution property that I can, I can blow up my A1 at the origin and lift. So I basically I replace this map in projective GIT with this composition. Uh, and that's now, that's infinite dimensional GIT. And the, po the point is that the bundles I wrote down are relatively ample for this map. The, the, the numerical invariant comes from a relatively ample bundle. Okay, that's all. Thank you. What did I say? Heart dogs. Yes, I mean heart dogs property. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That was like a weird neuron thing. Yeah. You can have a stronger thing, which is that if you have, yeah. So if you have like a, if you have a map from a spinning P1 uh -huh. that's not contracted here, then the pullback of this line bundle is ample. That would do it. That would do it for you. In fact, I, I'm 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 cheating a little bit. The numerical variant here doesn't actually come from a line bundle, but it has this monotonicity property that if I have a a, ma a map from a spinning P1 that's sort of non-contracted, you know. Uh, yeah, that's not contracted here, then the, then the weight that I'm looking at, the number is bigger at one side than the other, depending on the orientation of the spinning. Yeah, yeah, so there's a, there's a purely formal, it's just this property that I need. Yeah. So this Arthur's Parthex property for PT, right? Is it clear or is it something, or is it actually a new result? It's not really, it's a lemma. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, so in the case of G, oh, oh, I should say, yeah, sorry, to be like completely um, uh, above board, we've only, f we've only finished the proof in the GLN case, but the G general G, yeah, so, so I mean, you, you know, I have a, I have a C, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's the statement that if you have an open subset and then you have a vector bundle on there, so this is, a, you know, and, and then you push forward, so you have a regular, you have a regular threefold, and you have some open subset you just, you, uh, whose complement is small enough co-dimension, you push forward and you get a coherent sheaf, uh, and that, that coherent sheaf will actually be a vector bundle away from the co-dimension three points. That's all, that's all it is, it's that fact. Because then you have, a, you have this very dense open subset in the surface times a curve, and you just pushed forward the coherent sheaf, and now the only thing you have to check is that I, that's still a vector bundle over a very dense open subset. And so because it's co-dimension three phenomenon where it fails to be a vector bundle, you'll get it. I actually wonder if that it won't be unique, though. No, no, it holds. GLN, yeah, it does. The quotient, yeah. And then, then GLN yeah. And then you can have a section with this, this map. Exactly. Yeah. So for an affine morphism, a sections are uniquely defined over the complement of codimension. They always extend, uh, you know, the, over the complement of codimension two points. So that's where that comes from. Yeah. So, uh, but it, it, it's a little bit funky because it's not. It's not a. It's not the. Um, it's not unique. The extension. Uh, but it still exists, and that's enough. It's a weak, a weak Hadamard or Hotdog's property or whatever. Hotdog's, yeah. Okay. No, but I mean, I think that's pretty interesting for somebody who knows what they're doing. I mean, like, uh, you know, presumably this is supposed to be the, you know, you're supposed to take the sort of Yang-Mills, you know, this sort of, uh, you're supposed to consider the gradient descent flow of the of the of the Yang Mills functional on the space of connections. That's the same picture here, except now it's this Yang, modified Yang Mills functional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a modified one. It's a deformed Yang Mills functional. Yeah, but that but presumably there's a thing like that, and that the you know, yeah. But I think that's yeah. Oh. I suggest all other questions in private.